Hi everyone, so welcome back to another academic video. In this one, I'm going to talk all about finding and funding a PhD. It's at this time of the year that I tend to get like a peek in my email inquiries from students asking if we're offering PhDs in my research group and from my own student tutees that I'm teaching about how you go about finding a PhD. So I thought I would share a few of the tips and ideas that I share with my students about how best to find and indeed fund a PhD body of research. Obviously, I'm doing this from the point of view of a physicist. So, you know, I work in the UK university system. I'm a UK lecturer and I teach physics. I think it's pretty similar finding a PhD across the sciences and the engineering and mathematics. Um, but let me know if you are a lecturer or a professor and you too are helping students find their PhD. Do let me know in the comments what your top tips are. But right now we're going to jump in and I'm going to start with discussing the funding. To start with funding because it's kind of key you know you you need to consider how you're going to financially support yourself if you're going to undertake a three or four year body of research to get a PhD and here in the UK we typically have PhDs with studentships PhDs with scholarships and PhDs that are self-funded now I as a student fell into the category of looking for studentship PhDs so when I was wanting to extend my master's um, I was not going to have the money <laughs> to support myself for another three years of study. So I needed to find a PhD that offered some financial support. And I think studentship PhDs are quite the common route to go down. And it's where the academic offering the PhD has money in place so that they can pay the PhD student effectively a stipend or a, a kind of a salary. Also pay for them to be registered with the university and typically to pay for any bench fees as well if the university needs that. Um, so yeah, for me, I was looking for PhDs with studentships in place. Now, when you're looking at these, sometimes there's eligibility criteria. You know, it depends on the person who's funded that PhD. So as a university lecturer, I will be applying to research grants, I'll be applying to maybe central charity schemes, um, trying to win money to fund the research of my group. And in part, some of that money will be put aside and dedicated to funding PhD students. Now, if I'm successful as an academic and I win one of these pots of money, that means I can now offer a PhD place with a studentship, which means it's going to come with that financial support for the student. So that's a very typical route, I think, that students here in the UK look for is these studentship PhDs. Now, another route you can go down is you can look to have a scholarship PhD. So this might be where you're financially supported by an institution or by potentially it's like a central government organisational body. Now, at my university, we do have this scheme where you can apply competitively to win funding for a PhD student. Um, and in order to apply for that funding, you need to put the application in for the research project at the same time as saying who the student is that would undertake that work. So as a PhD student, it gives you the opportunity to work alongside the academic supervisor and put your application together. And as you put that application together, if it's successful, not only will the research be funded, but also the studentship position will also be funded. Now, these are great when they work because you can identify a student early on, you can identify the research project early on, and as I said, you can put in this joint application. It gets a bit trickier if you put the application in and then it's not successful, because of course that student may have been relying or waiting on that one PhD opportunity. Sometimes you might lose the student because they might need to apply to another project which has got guaranteed funding. So, you know, it is a competitive application process. Sometimes you might find that your government has a scheme where they will give you a centrally funded scholarship. Um, so international students sometimes come into the UK on a government funded scholarship from their home country. And that pays again for their student fees and their living costs and any bench fees. 
So scholarships are another option. And then aside from the studentships and the scholarships, you've also got the self-funded PhDs. And these are where people would maybe continue to work. So you might continue to keep your job and do your PhD half time. Or you might say, actually, I've built up some funds, I've set some savings aside, and you might elect to actually pay for your PhD study yourself. Um, and there's, I guess there's a fourth option I should probably mention as well, is that sometimes companies will sponsor you to do a PhD whilst you work for that company. And that was certainly true of my previous employer when I was in industry. In my team, I did have uh, employees who were also simultaneously doing a PhD. I think once you've worked out your financial situation and which one of these routes or multiple routes is open to you, you can then start to tailor your search when you're trying to find that PhD. So for me, I needed to find a PhD that came with a studentship that had that money to support me whilst I studied. So here in the UK then, typical places you can look to find a PhD. First of all, you can go directly to the universities. It's a really good idea before you start searching to kind of work out either what research topic you're interested in, is there a particular technique or subject area you would like to explore, is there a particular supervisor you want to work with or part of the country you want to be in, because that can help narrow down your search and then you can start to tailor your search looking at either specific geographically located universities or where the universities are that have the research teams that are working in complementary areas to the ones that you want to do your PhD in. But yeah, if you look at the university websites, often there'll be like a PhD page, they will list up the current vacancies at that point in time. Quite often you'll see the studentship vacancies listed alongside the scholarship vacancies. So it can be a really good starting place to actually look at individual universities. If you're wanting to do a bit more of a kind of a broad search, we have search engines and we have uh, dedicated websites. So one of the ones that I commonly recommend to my students is findaphd.com, I think it's .com. Um, and it, again, it lists out PhD opportunities. It tells you what the subject is for the PhD. It tells you who the researcher is for the PhD and crucially, whether that PhD is funded or not. Because what you might find is that if the university offering the PhD has won money for that PhD, so if the lecturer has got money to fund the PhD position, quite often that might be in a designated topic. They've won the funding and it's to go on this particular topic. And so as the researching PhD student, you'd be researching that topic. Alternatively, you might find PhDs where it's a general area but the academic who will be supervising the work invites you as the prospective student to kind of pitch forward a research idea of what you would like to study. Now, in PhD land, you know, eventually, once you start your PhD, after the first year, typically anyway, then as you move into your second and third years, you are leading the, the direction of your study. You know, you are following maybe lines of inquiry that have opened up during your first year and that might be different from your original plan or it might match your original ideas. Um, so yeah, you might find that anyway, once you start your PhD, you're able to shape your research. But there is that difference that sometimes PhDs will come with a pre-designated topic and sometimes it's up to you to pick the topic. Um, that was a bit of an aside, back to where to find a PhD. So looking at university websites is a good starting point looking at the central kind of googly search type places like findaphd.com is a good place talking with your personal tutor if you're at university currently and you are studying and looking to extend your studies talking to your tutors about opportunities and um, what they might know of research groups around the country or internationally that you can apply for that can be a good place um so yeah there's no one search place it's not like you go to this one place and every single phd in the country will be listed there you have to do a little bit of work and look in multiple places to find the PhD opportunities. And then once you've found one, then it's time to think about putting in your application. But I will save that video for a future day. Um, so yeah, 
If you're searching for a PhD right now, I hope that search is going okay. Sometimes it can be a bit frustrating if you want to do a particular topic and you can't find it. Sometimes it just takes a bit of time to kind of work out exactly where you want to be and what you want to be studying. Um, as a PhD supervisor, so as a lecturer, you know, sometimes it's frustrating because I get emails from lovely prospective candidates, but I might not have the funding or the bandwidth and capacity to supervise projects at that point in time. Um, it's lovely when I've got funding and I can put out an advert and I can like apply, get students to apply into it. That's really a nice opportunity as an academic lecturer. So if you're a professor or a lecturer, let me know how do you go about finding PhD students? Do you do it a lot? Or maybe you only have one or two on the go at any one time project wise. So yeah, let me know. Have an awesome week. Keep staying safe. You know, it's autumnal here in the UK, so it's very cold now although it's beautiful with all the leaves falling from the trees. Um, but yeah, have a lovely week. Happy job PhD hunting, if that's what you're doing at the moment. And I will see you next Monday. Bye.